back to my YouTube channel. Okay, so um, I'm actually inside today to do a short introduction on a project or something that I built um, maybe about six years ago. Like all my projects, I've only started recently putting them up on YouTube. So this project is not so much unique, but it's interesting, you know. So I basically converted um, an engine into a lathe to turn itself down, or to turn the crankshaft down. So basically I will describe it as simple as possible. A crankshaft on the engine that I was interested in, or was using, was a, it was a C32A um, engine, so it's a C-series Honda engine. I have been interested in Honda engines for, I don't know, since I was 10 years old. Um, the C series, I the V6 engines then, and the J series. So I started to get interested in them when I was about my early teens, and I have converted them in different cars such as Civics um, from a very young age. And I was just always interested in them Honda engines. I was a Honda enthusiast because they're the best, you know. Nah, I'm only joking. Not really. No, they are the best, along with Toyota, of course. But I put Honda at the top. So um, uh, I would like to keep on talking here, so um, the crankshaft in the C-Series engine is sort of tapered like this, right? Um, what I wanted to achieve was a, a counterbore hole to match the K-Series gearbox. So I wanted the spigot shaft in the K-Series box to line into, into the crankshaft on a C-Series. I could have spaced it out with a spacer, such as an inch spacer, a conversion plate, but my conversion plate was um, five or six mil thick, um, stainless steel plate, um, and all the uh, bolt holes were all tapped to metric fine fitment. So um, basically what I'm trying to say is, this video was based on turning your engine into a lathe to turn the crankshaft down. The reason I done that was um, to, so I didn't have to remove the crankshaft from the engine and you know the crankshaft could have lay about in a machine shop, it could have got damaged, moisture could have got out the journals, um, there's a number of things, parts could have went missing but also when I was modifying this gearbox on this conversion, this gearbox onto this engine, there's a lot of different you know iteration different changes needed to be done for in order for this gearbox to fit so it's not just as simple as but or making a conversion plate and bolting it up i had a um weld up tabs in the k series box the bell housing i had to um cut bits out of the c series block and weld bits in here and there and everywhere um right round um i also had to um make up the old carrier shaft because um, these C series engines come in, well, the C32 comes in the Legends, and, uh, well, not just the Legends even, and the engine sits um, longitudinal, like a back wheel drive, yes. So I wanted to convert that to sit transversely, so sit like a front wheel drive um, with the K series box. Um, so I had to make up my own carrier shaft, carrier bracket. Um, more or less carrier shaft. So I had to block the hole off in the sump, which is quite simple. I had to make up the carrier shaft. The pictures was there to, um, at the end of the video to demonstrate. Um, right through the manufacturing of it. So um, also I had to make up brackets on the block itself for the engine mounts. For the engine mounts to bolt onto. So I had to make uh, bolt holes on the block, on the C-series. Uh, what else did I have to do? I had to, um, well the timer, or sorry, the leaf tool is the biggest job of the whole lot. As I say, I could have put a spacer in there, but I wanted to have the spigot shaft, the main shaft, and the gearbox, um, back up to the same spec as Honda have left it. So at um, high RPMs, you don't want the shaft um, moving about at the end, so you want it sitting in a bush, in the crank. Um, on a, like a brass or hard material, a material is not going to wear obviously. So what I needed to do is turn the hole down to 20 millimeters. I think it was 20 or 19 millimeters. I'm not sure now. It was that long ago. 
But, so I removed the taper using my lift tool by um, barling the engine. So the engine's acting as a motor, yes. Motor gearbox, whatever. And the cutting tool, the boring tool is screwed in or driven in on a, with a G-clamp, so a linear bar, screw bar. Um, so this tool had two axes. It had an axis going across the engine, yes. And then it had an axis going straight into the crank for the cutting tool. Um, I am now going to demonstrate um, this whole process um, and we will take it from there. But I should say that um, this is not the same in the C series engine that I have um, put into um, the likes of a Civic when I was, I don't know, 15 years old. It's uh, a 3.2, so um, these all these C series engines were used in. Well, the 2.7 was used in police cars in London um, or England. Um, they were a very fast um, engine in their day. You know, good technology on them. Reliable too, very reliable and very torquey. You're down low, low RPM, right through the range. So um, the power to rate ratio is quite incredible when you put it into the likes of a Civic. Which, but now yeah, I'm more focused on the J series engines as they're, I don't know, more horsepower of them, more torque and we're modern, you know, and um, so I'm going to move on now to the demonstration. The first uh, video clip that's going to come up here is the K series box on the C series engine. Um, after that, I'll be showing um, demonstrating uh, turning the crank down using a special tool. You will see it's all welded up in stainless. Um, and that's that. I hope I haven't forgotten that in an introduction here, but. Um, if I have, I will speak about it in the images and all. So, thank you for watching. Enjoy. Okay, everyone. This is the first time the engine was started with the K-Series box attached to the C-Series. Is that hard to laminate? So uh, oil was laying in the cylinders here, it was poured in, uh, bumped the board to protect the engine. This is the lift tool finished, it is built out of stainless steel. It has two axes, um, the metal axis is held with a bolt, it doesn't need to adjust it once in place. The G clamp there is used to uh, move the boring bar into the crank, the cutting tool. The video that follows demonstrating, uh, demonstrates the cutting uh, process, cutting the crank. So the engine was barred over using the starter. Um, the spark plugs uh, was removed to remove the compression. So it turned over nice and even and fast as possible. Uh, the images that follow is uh, the hole nearly cut out using the boring bar. At this stage it's nearly finished, ready for a fine cut. So this is the tool bolted onto the block um, using the uh, metric fine bolts on the fitment. So this is the bushing that was removed from the K-series crank and is placed into the C-series crank. Uh, this is a close-up of the lift tool welded together. Uh, at this stage the crank is finally bored out. So the conversion plate um, was, first of all the hole was cut in the centre of the conversion plate and then it was set up against wee spikes. We, you can see the wee points here screwed into the holes to get the centre of the holes. Um, there you go there. And then you hit the plate with a hammer to find the first hole, a second hole, third hole, fourth hole. And then any holes that weren't there um, needed to be added to the block or added to the gearbox. So this is the conversion clip being screwed to the block. You see a nice gap around the ring gear between the conversion clip and the ring gear. So uh, the gearbox had to be tweeted um, for the starter, the, the genuine starter for the C series. You can see that's tweeted too. To bring it in closer to the ring gear, the K-series ring gear on the flywheel. 
Um, also, there had to be loads of tweeted piece parts, like such as this part here, new bolt holes, um, new bolt pattern, because pattern, there was nowhere to bolt uh, the gearbox above the starter there. Uh, bits had to be cut out um, to allow for the hexagon bolts um, holding the conversion pit to the block. You can see the new bolt pattern there now on the gearbox. So the side mount on the engine also had to be all made up. Um, the carrier shaft had to be room for it, so I had to remove parts of the block um, that held air conditioning pumps or similar. So this is the part of the block that's all welded up for the new engine mount. You can see there at the bottom, in the middle of the photo. Uh, the stainless bracket then was made to bolt onto the block, um, the new holes. Uh, there's a close up of the aluminium block being welded, so it's nice and neat. So, this is the beginning of the bracket, or the part that will be mounted out onto a car shell. So, this is stainless steel, that's 316 or 304, not sure now. So, this is a, this would have been the side uh, engine mount. It's bolted to the block and the heads. Okay, so the carrier bearing, because the engine now was changed from longitudinal to transversely, it's, so it's sitting front wheel drive, I had to make up a carrier shaft, so the drive shaft now runs along the block, but it would have went through the sump, usually in the genuine car, the car that came out of, the Legend, as you can see here, so I needed to make a bracket up to support the K-series uh, carrier shaft, carrier bearing, and shaft. Uh, you can see there now the conversion plate all bolted up um, and this is a image off the bottom of it. A part uh, also needed to remove from the block there to allow the dry shaft into the diff in the K-series box. So this is the bracket that was made up um, to span over the sump and the block to hold um, the K-series carrier shaft. Uh, it's 6mm aluminium and also then there's a 12mm or 10mm plate welded to it with a bracket support um, welded down the middle of it as can be seen in the next images. So this is the before the support was welded in, a wee video clip. Huh? It is welded up with the TIG or tacked up with the TIG. So here we have um, the bracket uh, welded completely, both sides. Um, so this is to support the carrier bearing. It is quite strong, you know. Bolted uh, four bolt holes uh, to the sump. The sump's brave and deep in the C-series engine. So after this, um, I had to uh, adopt the wiring harness. So the wiring harness in these cars is very big because the cars that these engines are out of is a luxury car. Uh, it has everything in it in the 90s. It has, I don't know, cruise control. There's about uh, 10 computers in it. It has everything you could think of for a car in the 90s. And I had to remove everything. Um, all the, the control units. You're not the camera, um, go ahead, Mario. I brought them back just to basically an engine harness to the ECU. The exhaust has changed at that stage. So I should point out, if you want to see the manifold that I built for this engine, um, for the engine to sit transversely in a front wheel drive car, please look at my YouTube channel and you will find the manifold. It's under CV2A manifold, exhaust manifold. So I had to trace back everything, all ignition wires, uh, power wires, um, injector wires, and distributor wires, and keep things that you know, were needed and remove things that weren't needed. Um, I've been doing that since I was, I don't know, very young teenager, maybe 13 or younger even. You know, I've been. So, this is all the wee odds and ends that was left over. Um, the computers, I think there's a picture of them too. So, I've removed everything. There's ABS, um, door control units, everything. I don't even remember now. There's that much. So many modules. So this is all the excess wiring was left. This is the wiring room complete, so you can see there's minimal wires on it, finished, um, ready for conduit or tape. Um, and that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, thank you very much for watching and bye bye.